this is Raven Dana, and thanks for tuning in. This is, um, I don't know, what day is it? It's Friday. This is Friday, March 4th, 2022. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about getting grounded, being in the flow, and staying calm in, in the face of all the things that have been going on, everything that we've been through in the last handful of years. Um, I don't need to name it all. You, you know what it is between COVID and everything else and, um, you know, the current world mess we're experiencing. But it's been, for all of us, you know, one hit after another in some form. And unless you practice, unless you have some skill at getting grounded and returning yourself to the moment, not getting lost in your mind, your stress levels go up and up. And... Um, the more you're able to be aware of how to interrupt your mind and how to get back into the moment, the more you have some, it's not just being able to manage your mood, it's, it's much deeper than that. This is one of those places where science and magic dance together. So when we talk about being in the flow, we talk about the ability to trust our larger, deeper connections, to ride the energy around us rather than swim upstream and struggle against what's happening. It doesn't mean we have to like what's happening. Um, acceptance isn't liking what's going on, it's simply facing the reality rather than awfulizing, rather than spending our time worrying about the future or dwelling on the past. So there are a few things that you might know, um, but don't pay that much attention to. You probably have heard from a number of different sources, you know, that just take a deep breath. Well, there's both magic and science in that. When you take a few very slow, very deep breaths, do, do that right now, just take a deep, humor me, take a deep breath. When you take a deep breath, your lungs actually press on your diaphragm. And your diaphragm then has a one-way nerve path, a, a pathway that goes directly to your brain. And that signal, when your lungs expand and press on your diaphragm, is a message that says, everything's okay in this moment. We're not in danger in this moment. And so your body changes chemistry instantly, and you have a greater sense of relaxation. So the more upset we are, the more we dwell in our minds rather in the moment, the less access we have to the energy available around us because we're not in touch with it. We're off in La La Land in our minds. So that, that practice of deep breathing is actually a way to cut the ties between where you want to be and where your mind keeps trying to drag you. So you might have to do it fairly often at first, but it's a great interruption. It gives you a way out of whatever panic mode you're falling into or whatever stress or whatever story on, the, on Facebook or on TV you just saw that's upsetting you. And it gets you back into the here and now, where if you just look around the room that you're in, you realize that there's nothing wrong here with you in this moment. And that helps uh, in a number of different ways. It makes you more resourceful because you're not in worry mode. And it also opens your awareness to larger places where you have an, an ability to put puzzle pieces together, to come up with things to do that are useful, that are different from calling somebody and complaining about the state of the world. There might be some action that you can take, something positive or powerful that you can come up with to help yourself and others if you practice getting grounded and back into the moment. And of course, you also feel better. And it's also better for your uh, health because being up in your head in that space is very, very stressful. See, we don't know the difference between an imagined threat and a real threat. When we imagine a threat, our chemistry goes to that place where we would go if we, if we were experiencing a real threat. Now, it might not be cranked up to 10, but it's still gonna be cranked up. And one of the ways you'll notice that is because, again, your breath will tend to be high in the chest and shallow. 
So if you're stressy, if you're unable to think straight, if you're not feeling focused and able to be present, breathing is one way to get yourself back. Another great way to get yourself back is to get outside. Literally get grounded. Put your feet, bare feet if you can, on the ground. Again, another place where science and magic meet. This is something very old. This is something our grandmothers told us. We were feeling off and, you know, go outside, get outside, get sunshine, get on the ground and play, go roll around in the dirt. There's a tremendous amount of wisdom in that for many reasons, one of, one of which is that our nervous system, our bodies, are not meant to be inside all the time. This is not how we're wired. We're wired to interface with the electromagnetic field of the Earth. We're made to interface with all the different things that are in the air that the plants put off, that we breathe in. So you might recently have even read something about taking what's called a forest bath, right? 20 minutes in the woods, which boosts your immune system, calms you down, does all these wonderful things. Well, again, this is not new information, even though science is very slowly coming around to things that, well, pagans have known for thousands of years, that being in nature, physically present in nature, is calming, it's soothing, and it is restorative. Now, it also will open your awareness to the deeper world of messages, to the world behind the world, where again, you might have some feelings, some wisdom, some insight that you might not have otherwise. So the beginning of all practical thinking, the beginning of all practical magic, is being grounded and in the moment. And that's how we achieve being in the flow. And we all know what it is to be in the flow. It's to be in that timeless space where we're so present that it, the time, time shifts in a way that we are unaware of it. So being in the flow can happen when we're working and enjoying our task. It can happen when we're, when we're cleaning. It can happen when we're singing, when we're making art, when we're playing with our kids. But being in the flow in this context, when we're talking about actively being in the flow for a purpose, we're also including what I'll call practical magic to be able to bring ourselves out of the crazy place, off the crazy train, away from all of the worries and concerns, out of the place where we go when we make up stories and tell ourselves how bad things are or how bad our lives are. And instead of doing that, if we can get grounded, then we can put our attention on the flow. We can actually speak into the world our desires, what we want, what we're trying to create, or what we're trying to uncover. If there's a problem in our lives, if there's something that we haven't been able to sort out, and we can just quiet our busy minds and get in the flow, there's practical magic there in that we're able to then open our awareness to that large, deep body of information in our unconscious minds that we won't have access to if we're upstairs in the attic of our brains uh, making up stuff or, or worrying about our problems. So when we're quiet and we're connected and we're aware of that connection, we can then speak things into the world. We can then lend our, uh, our intuition and lend our imagination to the creation of that which we want rather than that which we feel. Fear. So when we talk about attraction and energy, what we're really talking about is how our thoughts and our emotions every day, all day, build connections between our present moment and things that are similar to what we imagine. So if we imagine a lot of chaos and discord and we fear it and we worry about it, we are far more likely to encounter it. Not, not because it's some kind of bad luck, but because it's what, again, it's, we'll call it practical magic, but it's what our minds are being tuned to look for. So when, when you're not feeling great and you think, well, what I need to do is dig in and solve this problem, what you really need to do is back off and get in the moment. 
to get out of that space of worry and to get back in that place where everything is calm. So walking by the lake, sitting under a tree, listening to the birds, watching the sunset or the moon rise, these are all things that our ancestors have done for millions of years and in circumstances far tougher than ours. I mean, you know, we have homes and refrigerators and families and food and bank accounts. Our ancestors had, some of them had none of that. You know, maybe they had families, but that's, you know, they were maybe living in a cave or living in a place with a dirt floor and out hunting every day for their food or trying to gather their beans. So, you know, again, life was very different for our, our far back ancestors. And yet they were able to do what needed to be done in order to create history, to pass on their genes. And a lot of what helped them is the same thing that helps us, being in cycle, in rhythm with the natural world and being able to notice on a very deep level, again, in an intuitive way, the things that we cannot see when our minds are busy. So. Another practice is any form of meditating. Now, you don't have to do formal meditation, sitting in lotus position or any of that stuff. I'm talking about the practice of quieting your mind. So it doesn't really matter how you do it. You can use guided imagery. You can use shamanic journeying. You can use following and flowing with your breath. You can sit and stare at a candle. You can go watch the ocean waves. Whatever it is that in your doing of it, your mind becomes still and your attention, your awareness opens and deepens. So the practice of meditation, much like what is said about the practice of yoga, that it's, it's meant to inhibit the modifications of the mind. Now what that means is it's, it's supposed to give us a little break from the way our minds slap judgments and imaginings on top of reality and then mistake what we're thinking for reality itself, right? It can be a real headache when we do that and most of us do it a fair amount of the time. So being able to call yourself out of that to again to open to that flow, that free flow of energy, of thought, of space, of being, of connection gives you access to the world behind the world gives you access to the deepest parts of your own intuition and awareness and allows you to make better sense of whatever is in front of you. That is the time when your intuition will rise more clearly and say, do this, not that. Or you'll just have a feeling about a person. Well, go tell that person or ask this person the question. So follow those things. It's also the time when synchronicities occur. You know, those meaningful coincidences. And to me, there's no such thing as a coincidence. Those hidden connections that we have between us and everything else in reality, they work behind the scenes to get things to happen, to get our attention and do so very successfully. So in fact, yesterday, I was on the phone with a friend who was sitting in a library with uh, boxes of letters in front of him, over 10,000 of them. and. Um, he put his hand in a box at random and pulled out a file and it happened to be my letters, my letters to him. And um, so we, he texted me and we talked about that a little bit. It was, you know, one of those funny coincidences, except of course, n not a coincidence. A few minutes later, I got in my car to go somewhere and a car pulled out in front of me and it's, uh, the license plate said UFO MSG, UFO message. Well, my friend that I was talking to, who I was talking to is Whitley Strieber, who of course, if you know who that is, um, you know why that's funny. And if you don't know who that is, well, I'll say that he's a, a well-known author in the field of um, visitors from other dimensions, UFOs and such. So it was um, a very interesting coinc coincidence. Well, I'll use the term lightly. But, you know, that aside, we have, we have synchronicities occur 
often that show us things, that guide us in a particular direction, that verify for us that something is happening, or that something is safe for us, or that something is not safe for us. So those synchronicities are something to pay attention to, and they will come more obviously to you when you are in the flow, when you are grounded. Another thing to do to get grounded is to take a bath or shower and literally, as you're doing that, imagine washing away whatever's bothering you, washing off your thoughts, washing away your worry and feel it and see it come off you and go down the drain. If it helps, use a good salt scrub or take a nice salt bath because salt, as we know, is also very good for clearing the system. And again, another place where science and magic meet, we know that putting Epsom salts in the water is very, very relaxing. So go ahead and do that for yourself. Wash away your troubles, literally. So you can breathe. You can ground outside in nature. You can meditate by um, in any means, any means that works for you. You can wash your mind away so that you come back to yourself. So those are four practices that you can do. Very practical, very easy, and I, I recommend that you do them regularly. And then that will help you not only to be in the moment, but then to expand your awareness of what it is to utilize practical magic, which is the ability to align your thoughts and your emotions so that an outcome that falls in alignment with what you desire is more likely to occur. So more on that. I'll, um, I'll offer something on what, is, what are spells and how do they work and you know, we'll, we'll, do a, we'll do a little conversation about that in the near future. But for today, I'm just offering you this piece of the puzzle for how to get back to yourself and get in the flow and get in that calm space and I hope you have a great weekend and a lovely evening. Thanks for tuning in. Again, this is Raven Dana. And you can reach me if you have any questions uh, at ravendana55 at gmail.com. Have a lovely evening and thanks for tuning in.